Hi everyone, my name is Hermione and I am very passionate about organisation. Look, if you're into astrology and you took a look at my birth chart and you saw all the Virgo placements, you'd know what I'm talking about. I do also have a Sagittarius rising though, that's probably why I've packed up my stuff and headed over to the other side of the world. <laughs> anyway, that is not what we're talking about today. Today I want to talk about digital organisation because without my digital organisation system, my entire life would fall apart and I genuinely mean that. I want to share with you how I do it in case you want to start digitally organising yourself or in case you just love organisation too and want to know what's going on on my computer. Before we jump in, I can't quite believe I'm saying this, but today's video is very kindly sponsored by Notion and if you've been on my channel for a while, you know how much I love Notion from the bottom of my heart and I genuinely don't know what I would do without it. Notion is an app that you can use on your mobile or your desktop and you can use it in so many different ways. I'll show you how I use mine, but I use it to keep myself organized. I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we get into the video, but a big thank you to Notion, not only for sponsoring this video, but for keeping my life completely organized. And thank you to you guys for watching the video. So let's just, let's get started, shall we? The first step I wanna talk about is actually not related to digital just yet. I wanna shout out the good old fashioned pen and paper. If I'm having a really overwhelming day or I've got a lot of ideas rattling around in my head and I don't know how to make sense of them, pen and paper is normally the first place I go. I'll either write them out as a list or I'll do a brain dump. And this just helps me visualize all of the things that are in my brain that need to get out and that I need to make sense of. Some days I just need to write it out first and then digitally organize it. And if you haven't ever done any digital organization, this is still a really good place to start. And it's a great way to sort of get your ideas into an order. On to the next tip. If you have never started a digital organization journey before, I highly recommend a good declutter of your devices. Even if you have a good system in place, it's great to go through every two to three months and declutter things out of your downloads folder off of your desktop. Get rid of any applications that you no longer use or need. It frees up a lot of space and you'll feel a lot lighter with a lot less things. My next tip for staying organized is to really make my devices look visually aesthetically pleasing. I just think that this genuinely helps me keep things decluttered. If my computer desktop is clear and it looks pretty, I'm gonna wanna keep it that way. If you want some free desktop wallpapers actually, I have these available on my website for free, no catch, no email sign up, you can just download them and you can use them to organize your files if you would like. I just thought it'd be something fun to do. So do check them out if you want a new desktop background. And then if you're wondering about why my files look so funky, it's because I changed the file folder icon. This is gonna be different for whatever kind of device you're using, but on Mac, what I do is I download a PNG image. It has to have a transparent background for this to work, so it has to be a .png. And then I just go and change the folder icon. So to do this, I locate the image, I copy it with the keyboard shortcut, and then I open the information for the file folder, and then you just paste the image where the folder icon is at the top and it changes. I think this looks really cute and there's so many different things that you can do to your desktop this way to make it just look visually appealing. And aside from making things visually appealing, functionally what I like to do is make sure that my most utilized file folders are accessible on the sidebar on my Mac Finder. This way it's just so easy to access them when I need them as well. So you've decluttered your device, you've styled it beautifully, but how do you actually start getting organized? Well, this is where Notion and all of my other apps come into play. So let's start by talking about Notion. As I've mentioned before, I have been using Notion for years and I've spoken about it on my channel. If I had to delete every single app on my laptop and only keep one, I say this without a shadow of a doubt, it would be Notion because I literally use this for everything. And the thing I like most about it is that it's really flexible and you can use it to organize your life in the way that works best for you. I wanna go through a little Notion tour and share with you some of my most frequently used pages in the hopes that it might give you a few ideas of how to use it for yourself. So let's jump in. 
If you're in the Notion community, you might notice that a lot of people have dashboards. I too have a dashboard. I don't use this as much as my This Week page, but I do use it to have a lot of widgets and just some general information. So I've got the weather, I've got the time in London and Seoul, I've got some countdowns and some goals that I like to keep track of. And I also have linked all of my pages at the bottom. The widgets are from Indify and I love using these on my Notion. Down the side here, you can also see that this is where all of my pages are. So let's jump to my most frequently used page, which is This Week. At the top of my This Week page, I've got a weather widget showing the weather in my current location, which is Seoul. And then moving down to my most utilized section in my whole Notion, the days of the week. I've actually cleared quite a lot of stuff off of these so that you can see what I'm doing while I'm talking about it. And I've just got a couple of small things in there. For my weekly agenda, in the first column, I have a notes section. This is for where I might need to make a quick note when I'm on my phone. And then for every other section, I just have the day of the week and all of my appointments and the things I'm doing. All of the text for the days of the week are actually images that I made myself. I made these online on Canva and I downloaded them as a transparent PNG and just plonked them in. I just wanted to give it a little bit more color and interest and I really like this font. <laughs> to use the weekly agenda, as you can see, there is a new task button. So I just click this and it pulls up a checkbox and I can input my task. As we scroll down, you can see my to-do list. So this actually links to another page. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and show you that page and how my to-do list is set up. So this is my to-do list and this is actually a table. I found out how to do this through a YouTube video. I'm gonna link the creator and the video below because it was really helpful. This is the table view, which includes all of my completed tasks. And then I switch it to the list view to add a new task. To do that, I just click up here and then I input all of the important information. As you can see, mine is set up with a task name, the priority level, which is a traffic light system with urgent, important, and not urgent, a checkbox for completed and a due date. There's also a notes section in case I need to add any additional notes. Heading back to my this week page, let's talk about my habit tracker. It's linked to another page and as you can see here, I've got a few habits like study Korean and exercise and they're linked to check boxes. At the end of the table, I have drop down boxes to show what kind of exercise I did or what kind of activity that I did for personal growth. I have a lot of pages on my Notion and I want to keep this relevant. So the last one I'll talk about is my 2022 goals page. On this page, as you can see, I have a lot of pages that link to books I've read this year, movies I've watched, what I have done. But as I scroll down, you can see that I've also categorized my goals into four separate categories. These are goals that I actually set up at the last quarter of this year. So I've been ticking these off since October, but it's the end of the year. I'm feeling a little bit tired. I think we need to refresh these next year. Anyway, those are some of the boards that I wanted to share with you. Let's jump back into the video. Oh, I love Notion. If you want to check out Notion for yourself, I'm going to leave a link for it down below. It's completely free to download. It's on mobile. It's on desktop. It's genuinely changed my life. Quickly, I want to talk about color coordination because this is something that makes a big difference to me. I like to coordinate colors across the board, not only on my YouTube branding, but I use these same colors in my organization too, on my calendar and in different areas on my Notion too. I use hex codes to do this, which is an alphanumerical setup of six letters and this will give you an exact color which you can use across pretty much all applications online. If you're not computer savvy, don't panic, it's nothing super techy, but you can find hex codes online and you can even find some inspiration on Pinterest if you type in something like branding colors or hex color chart or something. I've picked my own, I use these across my branding on YouTube, but also across all of my organization on my laptop too. And it just makes me very happy that everything matches. I love it. <laughs> Next up, let's talk about my calendar because this is how I organize my time. And recently I've switched this up a little bit. I've changed applications and I've started using time blocking and I wanna talk about it because I really think it's helping me a lot. Let's start from the beginning. I used to be an Apple calendar girl since about 2018. I like it. 
but I, I really wanted to switch things up so I've moved to Google Calendar and although there are some functionality issues that I'm just trying to wrap my head around like there's no infinite scrolling and I don't know I, I don't like the scrolling but and there's a few other things that I'm still trying to <laughs> I'm still trying to get right but I think it will come naturally when I've been using it for a while longer. The reason I wanted to do this is because I wanted a little bit more flexibility with my calendars and honestly I just wanted to change the colours <laughs> on my calendars. <sighs> Why am I the way that I am? It just makes my brain happy, what can I say? But I actually like changing the hex codes on each individual calendar as well so that I can make this match with my theme, but it also has a different color for each type of event. Off the top of my head, I have five calendars. I have one which is my daily calendar, which is what am I doing that day, like personal thing. I have a separate calendar for when I'm going to upload something to YouTube. The next one is my daily calendar, which really is just like YouTube content creation. I have another calendar for my other job. I try and keep it as simple as possible with only five, but I have seen people with like 10 or 12 and I'm just like, oh, that looks so nice. <laughs> The way I organize my day at the moment is through time blocking, which simply means blocking out the hours of the day where you're doing particular things. I've started doing this recently and it has really helped me visualize my day so that I know how much time each task is gonna take. And it does make me feel a little bit less stressed out because I have a lot more control over the hours of my day. I have a little bit of problem with like time blindness and not knowing how long something's gonna take. So this has really, really been helping me. One thing I wanna mention is to go easy on yourself. Whether you have a no organization system in place or a very regimented one, kind of like a drill sergeant, you gotta find some kind of balance and you always have to remember, although productivity is important in your everyday life, it is not the be all and end all. And something I have struggled with in the past is trying to be super productive and stick to a routine and not building in time for rest, social activities, self-care, etc. Seeing as we're getting towards the end of the video, I want to tell you a little bit more of a personal story about my journey with organization and how I got here, in case it resonates with any of you guys, because it's been a bit of a wild ride, honestly. I don't think I've talked about this on my channel before. I might have, I don't know, but I have ADHD and it was quite a late diagnosis in life. And having ADHD is like fighting a losing battle with certain parts of your life particularly for me, organization. Honestly, it's been a journey. And had I known about this when I was a teenager, I think I would have been a lot easier on myself. But I am the least organized person that you've ever met. I'm also super clumsy and I lose everything. And I think, I think that is part of the ADHD, but if you don't have it, you might still have some of these qualities too, who knows? But my lack of organization was really impacting my everyday life and I think it hit home when I realized I was on my final warning at the dentist. If I were to miss another appointment, I was gonna be kicked out of the practice. And that made me feel so guilty because I was wasting other people's time as well as my own. And that's when I realized I had to start trying to figure out my life. And it was really hard for a long time because I ended up fixating on organization and to-do lists in a way that was really unhealthy. I would take a stack of printer paper like this thick and I'd slam it onto the counter of my nan's kitchen table and I would sit there for hours rewriting my to-do list again and again and again. The to-do list would be like 50 items long and I couldn't rest until I got it perfect. I just felt like there was so much information up in my brain and I couldn't make sense of it because my thoughts were cycling around and I had so many things going on all at once. It did help putting it on paper, but I wasted so much time doing this. My nan even sat me down a few times. She was like, I'm really worried about you. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> and the problem was the next day, like I genuinely couldn't even tick off the items on the list because of the ADHD. You know, you've got things like executive dysfunction and procrastination, not for the sake of procrastinating, but because you found something else that your brain thinks, oh, that's a good idea. And then I'd only do the things that weren't a priority and, 
As much as it was good to put things down on paper, I still didn't get anything done. I moved my system online, which really did help me because I stopped wasting so much time and paper rewriting things and I could just move things around. My to-do list was still long, but it wasn't taking up so much of my energy to make it. I don't know, if anyone out there has ADHD, I feel like there's two types of us. One type who just doesn't care for organization whatsoever, and one type who fixates on it because it's literally the only thing that they think they can do to get a grasp on the situation. <laughs> Nevertheless, the best thing I ever did was get diagnosed for ADHD and now I can manage my symptoms and I understand why my brain works the way it does and I try to put things in place that make life easier, such as digital organization and time blocking. It really, really helps. And that's why I say go easy on yourself because we all have a different battle we're fighting. Everyone's got something going on at some point in their life and sometimes you just need to be able to take a step back and just say, fuck it. <laughs> not that deep let's just breathe and stop being neurotic about your calendar Hermione <laughs> but yeah that does explain why I am the way I am and I wouldn't change it for the world okay I think it's time we wrap this video up I would love to know from you if you have any digital organization apps that I haven't mentioned that you really like or ways that you organize please let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you have ADHD too, and you have any productivity tips that work for ADHD brains, genuinely, please let me know. I, I would really, really appreciate that. With that being said, don't forget to check out some of my free resources if you want to have a look on my site. They're completely free to download. Also, Notion is linked down below and free to download if you want to check it out. I am obsessed with it. I really hope this video helped you. Let me know in the comments if you're going to use some of these tips. And with all of that, I'm going to sign out. So, we'll see you next time. Bye!